Thank you. Thank you really to Paolo Clisenti, to all the staff of this uh, great Italian pavilion. I would like to thank all the 45 uh, general commissioners of uh, so many countries. We kindly have accepted our invitation. And of course, I would like to express my hurtful thanks to Enrico Giovannini for having just uh, reiterated the strong uh, Italian government support for Rome's candidature to host the uh, Expo 2030, and also for his uh, personal commitment uh, to help Rome uh, to equip itself uh, over the next uh, years with uh, an advanced uh, sustainable mobility system. It's a great honor for me uh, to be here in Dubai uh, at this important stage in the journey that will take us uh, to the Expo 2030. And allow me to congratulate the organizers of Expo Dubai 2020 for the extraordinary uh, work they have done. I've been here just a few hours, but I've already appreciated the warmth of your welcome, the lavish pavillons, and the enthusiasm of the visitors. So Dubai has uh, admirably meet, met the aims of the World Expo and stands as a useful example for those who have decided to embark on such a, a challenge. At a time like this, uh, beset by a dramatic war, my first thoughts go out to the victims of the conflict in Ukraine and those who are enduring an, an unacceptable military aggression, which we firmly regret and condemn. Rome is a city of peace, of cooperation between people, of intercultural and interreligious dialogue, and we want to ensure that this vocation is fully on display in the Jubilee of Hope we will host in 2025, as well as at the Expo 2030. The World Exposition is an amazing platform for political economic cooperation. And its global reach uh, reminds us of the reasons that unite humanity when faced with major social, environmental, and technological challenges that no one can hope to address of or, or overcome on their own. These challenges call for the building of new relationships between people and territories. And this is our key concept for the Expo 2030. We want to address uh, this concept in a broad and comprehensive way, focusing on sustainability, innovation, and inclusion in accordance not only with the objectives of the UN 2030 agenda, but also uh, making kind of a bridge ahead, uh, looking ahead to the next 2050 uh, agenda. Uh, we want to promote a green regeneration based on a positive integration between cities and their natural environment, a regeneration that uh, actively helps to reduce emissions and streamline eco ecological transition, a smart regeneration, promoting the role of cities as innovation incubators and supporting public policies and businesses with the next generation digital networks, services, and research infrastructures, an inclusive regeneration, which enables cities to provide services that are close to the people and reduce inequalities. Let me outline uh, the four reasons why I believe uh, Rome uh, is the most suitable place to host an expo that focuses on these goals. I can summarize them in four, four words. History, green, innovation, inclusion. First, Rome is a unique city where one can make out all the different shapes and forms that relations between people and territories have taken on over 3,000 years of history. It is all on display. And that's why Sigmund Freud believed Rome to be a metaphor of a different layer of human memory. Like humanity, cities too must find ways to process their past, to build their future. And the city like Rome is the ideal place to frame and inspire such a discussion. 
And in order to ensure that the beauty of the past can be better enjoyed, we are working to improve the layout of the forum and the central archaeological area, transforming Via dei Fori into exclusively pedestrian areas, and uh, um, reshaping ancient squares to be enjoyed by citizens and visitors from all over the world. We are also intend to improve access to dozens of exceptional archaeological and cultural sites that are dotted around the city. Second, Rome is uh, one of the cities with the most extensive green belt in the world. Uh, more than two-thirds of the entire surface area, this uh, 1,200 square kilometers, are green, public green and agricultural areas more than any other European and most of, more than most of global municipalities. Uh, the green area and the river networks are uniformly distributed throughout Rome, perfectly incorporated into its urban layout, and the major distinctive feature of Rome urban setting along with its historical and cultural heritage. Preserving, strengthening, and expanding our ecological footprint is one of our main commitments for the coming years. That's why we plan to plant around one million new trees, and we are also promoting works to requalify the River Tevere, Rome extensive coastline, and to build up uh, uh, energy communities across the city. The integration of city and countryside much like uh, the evolutionary tension inherent in the relationship between our past epochs and today offer huge potential to redesign the relationship between people and territory. Third, Rome is a, a long-standing beacon of culture, science, and research. Our 16 universities, or 40, if we include the Vatican universities, host a population of over 200,000 students. Moreover, universities, research centers, and academies from all over the world have departments in Rome. And there are strong links with international cultural and knowledge circuits. After all, Rome was built by Romans alone. People's experience and influences from all over the world contributed to its development. And we want to call on these international academies and universities to contribute to the themes of Expo. Our idea is to foster partnerships and collaboration with these institutions and with other cities and countries to support research, studies, urban projects, social and technological innovations, conferences, masters and doctorate programs, and much besides, in particular involving the young generation. We want this to be the expo of the youth. We are working also to further strengthen the role of science and research in our city. Well before 2030, for example, the Rome Technopole will be fully operational, a reference hub for international education, research, and technological transfer. We want to create a conducive environment at promoting productive investment in advanced fields, fields such as IT, biomedical, green economy, digital, and so on. And we think also that in this respect for the business community, and also we have here a delegation of Italian and Roman business community, Rome is also a perfect entry point for the European single market. The fourth fundamental pillar of Rome identity, which our administration has singled out as requiring a special effort, revolves around solidarity and inclusion. Rome is traditionally an open and inclusive city. Today, we are actively engaged in an investment program that in addition to improving the infrastructural endowment of the city, also aims to bridge social gaps and inequalities. 
Our ideal city is polycentric and based on service proximity, on care and bonds between people, and the active involvement of civil society will play an important role in attaining this goal through partnership and subsidiarity. And we want that civil society will also be protagonist of our Expo. Expo 2030 will offer a perfect setting where ideas and projects related to urban regeneration from every country can flourish and drive inclusion, innovation, and sustainability. By treasuring and relaunching the methods that have been adopted so successful also here in Dubai, we imagine the Expo not only as a temporary exhibition, but as an opportunity for intelligent, inclusive, and sustainable urban regeneration. An opportunity for Rome to thrill the entire world once again. On this point, the time has come also to reveal the site where we expect to set up the World Expo. It is a big area in Tor Vergata, right next to the campus of, Rome's, of one of Rome's three major universities. The challenge we mean to meet is twofold. On the one hand, we intend to host the best ideas on how to rethink the relation between people and territories in a smart, sustainable, inclusive way. On the other hand, we will conceive Expo itself as a driver of a major program of urban regeneration. We are not just talking about regenerating the very Expo area with its vocation for research, innovation, and well-being, but the, the regeneration of an entire Roman quarter by reconnecting the green systems to the Rome Green Belt, the development of light mobility and public transport, the promotion of a regeneration plan that is not just urban, but also includes social, cultural, and environmental elements in an extraordinary area full of potential owing to its mix of nature, history, and science. As we see it, the area of Tor Vergata will be a workshop to which everyone can contribute and where we can map out a new model of territorial development. The experiment will be exposition itself. Through it, we will provide services and improve a major quarter of a city's suburban geography. To oversee this futuristic and ambitious project, we have chosen a world-renowned architect, who I thank for accepting to join us and help us meet this challenge. Carlo Ratti, MIT professor and director of the Sensible City Lab, founder of the Carlo Ratti Associates Design and Innovation Firm. In addition to his impressive CV, He's a leading figure in the exploration of the relationship between architecture and technology, innovation, and sustainability. With vast experience in international events, he has played a crucial role in the last two expos. Among his projects, we have had the chance to appreciate his master plan for MINE, MINE and Innovation District, which has redesigned the area that previously hosted Expo 2015 by turning it into an innovative center for the city. And lastly, along with the studio Italo Rotten Partners, Matteo Gatti and Associate and FIEM Ingegneria, he has designed this beautiful Italian pavilion here at Dubai Expo 2020. With uh, Carlo by our side, with the backing, the strong backing, whatever it takes, as Enrico said, that is from a Draghi government, is quite a strong statement of the Italian government, uh, competent oversight provided by Giampiero Massolo and all the team, which I thank, we will surprise you by working with you. The 2025 Jubilee will provide us with a chance to upgrade the city's already substantial accommodation so we can welcome 
tens of millions of visitors in a safe and hospitable context. The city administration and the government's effort in implementing the next generation EU plan will further enhance our capacity to put the eternal city and its wonders at the service of a major global event such as the World Exposition of 2030. We want Expo 2030 to be our shared event, an event that we will be building all together during the next years and that will help us in shaping and implementing the post-2030, the 2050 agenda. Thank you for your attention. We can wait to see you in Rome.